Hey everyone, it's Rob with Passport to the Parks, and tonight is Tuesday, July the 2nd, and I'm here at Disney's Pop Century and Art of Animation to talk about uh, something exciting that actually happened about three days ago. I was down at the International Gateway and saw two of the gondolas actually lit up on the inside, confirming that there is definitely power on board of the gondola. So I came here so we can take a little bit of a closer look and see exactly how that power supply works, uh, what else could possibly be used by that power supply in the gondolas, and we might even talk about that dreaded AC issue as well. So I'm going to turn you around and we'll have some fun. Okay, so first we can talk about uh, the mechanics of the hanger arm itself. And the hanger arm is what is holding on uh, to the haul rope. There's a grip and then the hanger arm goes down to the top of the gondola. So on that arm is a couple different functions. At the very top, you can see the, the grip and that is what's actually holding onto the haul rope. And right on top of that grip, uh, there are two springs and as the gondola enters the station those springs actually get depressed they get pushed down and then the grip releases so as those springs get pushed down the, the grip opens up and then the gondola is free to move inside uh, through the inner track so the the haul rope is constantly moving but that grip releases so the the gondola releases from the haul rope itself and then the wheels inside the track of the station can move the gondola around the inside then as it's leaving again uh, that same process will happen is that those springs will get depressed and the grip will open up again and then reclamp onto the haul rope and then the haul rope will pull the gondola out. So below that you have another mechanism about halfway down and that's for the door. So it's basically tilted upwards. It's, it's sort of a, a slider and as it enters the station as well there's another mechanism that pushes that slider down and it's kind of a, a hydraulic um, cable that goes down and then it opens the doors. And then as it, as it exits the station, it'll do the opposite. It'll push that lever back up, and then the doors will close. So that's all mechanical. What's electrical is we can see now that this is stopped. This is good. There's a square box that's right on the back of the gondola here, right on the roof. And that is a battery pack. And that actually runs up. There's cabling that runs up to the top near the grip. And there's two um, kind of black prongs, electrical prongs, that stick out. And as the gondola enters the station and it goes around that inner track, those prongs are actually making contact and it's charging that battery pack as it goes through. It's a rapid charge. So every time the gondola goes through a station, it's actually charging up that battery and that's going to provide power to the interior of the gondola, um, like lights and other features. And we're going to talk about what we definitely know is powered and then maybe some things that may be powered and maybe some far-fetched things as well. So. We're going to start with that. Okay, so the things we know for certain is there is definitely power on board of the gondola. Now what that power is going to be used for, we definitely know, is interior lighting because we saw it at the International Gateway. It looks like the, the roof, the interior roof of the gondola is lit up. I don't know if it's multiple lights or one light, but it looked like a pretty dimly lit, but the, the windows are tinted, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly how bright that light will be. And it's also hard to tell whether or not they're going to run that light constantly or if it's just going to be on as it comes into the station or as it exits the station so guests can see what they're doing. Now whether or not you travel with that light is another story. Uh, there might be some issues with seeing out of the gondolas with the lights on and everything so we'll have to see uh, as time goes on here. We also know that there's an exterior light. There's a tiny exterior light that's on the outside of the gondola. We'll wait for another one to come around here and it's actually can be a red or a green light. It's just a tiny, just to the right of the door, it's really hard to see. It's just a tiny little round light that's there. And that was both red and green. I'm not quite sure what it means, what they're gonna use it for, if it's some sort of an occupancy light, if it means something as it's entering the station, um, whether or not it should go to a secondary track, uh, whether or not it's a, it's a pass-through, if there's guests on board or not. We'll have to see exactly what that's for. So those are the two things that we absolutely know for sure that there is lights inside and that little light on the outside, the red and green lights, uh, would both use the electrical power from that battery on the top. Okay, so two things that the gondolas are most likely going to have, but we really can't confirm it yet because we haven't been inside the gondolas, would be announcements and music. So the music would be a lot of fun just uh, for the simple fact of as you're going through the different areas, maybe the music can correspond to what you're passing over. Or another rumor that I've actually heard, which would be really cool, is maybe if you're in a character-themed gondola, that the music might correspond to whatever particular character 
that uh, might be on the, the outside of that gondola. So Toy Story music or, um, you know, uh, Wreck-It Ralph music or whatever it would be. I don't know if Wreck-It Ralph actually has a soundtrack, but you get the idea. Beauty and the Beast, there's a good one right there. That would be great music as well. Uh, the other thing would be the announcements. That one, I'm pretty well certain that they're definitely going to have because A, they're going to want to tell you different things that you're looking at, uh, kind of like when you're on the monorail. It'll give you an idea of the different hotels and stuff that you pass. But, you know, as you're uh, entering a station or as you're approaching a station, it's probably going to say things like, you know, you're approaching Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. Please gather your belongings. Uh, please watch your step, all those things. Watch out for the lights to come on, whatever the announcements might be, safety announcements, uh, those types of things. If you need to exit here, you know, please do so. If you want to stay on board and continue on, say if you're going through the Riviera, if you'd like to stay on board and continue on through to Epcot, you can do so. Uh, or if you need to exit. So whatever Disney needs to, to get their point across, that would be the announcement. So those are most likely going to happen. But again, until we get inside and can hear these things, uh, really no way to confirm that. But that's definitely what would the, the power supply would be able to provide. And I came out here a little later in the evening uh, just for the possibility of they might light up a gondola or two here. I doubt it. It seems like they were just doing it overnight at the International Gateway. We'll see how late these gondolas run. But um, I want to talk about what's possible. It may not like, be very likely, but it's very possible that we could have uh, cameras on board. There could be some sort of a small camera inside the cabin itself. Obviously, again, for safety reasons, we want to make sure that people are safe. There's nothing going on inside the gondola. Um, if anybody is trying to act inappropriate inside the gondola or do something they shouldn't, uh, you know, the dispatchers might be able to see that on the camera and then be able to take care of that as needed. Uh, the other thing could be a possible fan. Now, we know it has the passive ventilation system, so when the windows are open, there's gonna be air flowing through, but maybe there's uh, uh, some sort of a little fan that's on the inside as well to provide a little extra airflow, you know, if the gondola were to stop for some reason, so you could have a little bit of an air movement through there. So that would be a possibility as well. Uh, another one would be, uh, we know there's the interior lights, but maybe some exterior lights I think would be really cool and it could be very possible. Uh, maybe some small LED lighting that we just can't see. Maybe it's inside, you know, the around the window frames. Maybe it's on the bottom. Uh, maybe just some sort of an exterior lighting so you just get a really cool little glimpse of seeing all these gondolas lit up at night as they're traveling. With the interior lights on, you can see it. It's very dimly lit, but when they're all lit up, it should look pretty neat, kind of like a, a really um, light hue of light kind of going across the sky. So that might be really neat, but it's very possible that there could be some sort of an external light outside of that little light that's the little red or green light that's on the, uh, the side of the door there. That's more for an operational purpose. Okay, and the last issue that we are going to talk about is the doubtful to pretty much no column, and that is going to be the air conditioning on board of the gondolas. Disney has already announced that there is no air conditioning on board, and we can definitely confirm that. Uh, as we look at the gondolas, as I've watched them over and over and over again, there is no air conditioning unit anywhere on board, not in the base of it, not on the top anywhere. So there's definitely not gonna be the air conditioning, but you know, it's not gonna be a big issue. Don't let that detour you from, from riding this amazing mode of transportation. With that passive ventilation system, you're gonna get plenty of airflow through the gondola, especially with those tinted windows as well. I keep saying, as long as the sun is not on your back, it's not beating down on you, you are much, much cooler, especially here in Florida. What makes you extremely hot is that Florida sun. So you take that out of the mix and that's already gonna bring you down to a much cooler level. Then you get the airflow through the gondolas and maybe even the possibility of a fan inside that would be um, really, really great if they did that. But, you know, it's not something that I don't think is going to really be that big of an effect on the ride itself. I think it's gonna be very comfortable. And again, another thing that I talk about is look around you inside of Disney. What are the other things that we love? Uh, the boat transportation, I talk about this all the time. 90% of the boat transportation in Disney World is not air conditioned, it's all outdoor. And it's wonderful. I would prefer to ride a boat over anything. Well, maybe not the Skyliner, but uh, I love the boat transportation and it's not air conditioned, but it's covered. As long as that sun is off of your head and you get that nice little breeze that's coming through, it's a very comfortable ride. You also have the trams in the parking lot. Same thing, the sun is off your head and as you're riding, you get that really nice breeze that comes in. 
There's different rides within the parks. The People Mover is a huge example. That sun is off your head and you get that nice breeze coming in. It's, what, it's probably everybody's favorite ride as they go in. Everybody loves to ride the People Mover. The Jungle Cruise, another great example. I mean, you can go on and on with the different examples of things that are already part of Disney that we all love that are not air conditioned, but we accept those rides. I think it's just because the Skyliner is so new and people like to have things to you know, complain about, especially online. That's really what we're seeing. So until we actually get on there and we experience it, uh, we can't really say whether or not this is gonna be you know, incredibly hot or incredibly cool or not. My personal opinion, is that it's gonna be a very comfortable ride. I think Disney is doing their, their due diligence, they're testing it out, they're making sure that it's gonna be comfortable for people. They want this to succeed. So I think we all need to give it a chance and really take a look at everything around us and say, what do we already love? We love these things, we love these modes of transportation that are not air conditioned. And I think the Skyliner is gonna become, you know, just another part of that Disney you know, memory, that part of that Disney moment that you come here, you want to ride the Skyliner, just like you ride the, the boats, even the monorail, the, you know, the monorail is air conditioned, but it's just, uh, you know, it's that amazing Disney moment that you, that you want to experience. And just look at this. I mean, you're, you're flying through the air and it's so amazing. And you're in a, a character gondola and you're seeing all these new things, new views of things that we've never seen before from up in the sky. So I'm all on board. Uh, I'm not, I don't really care about the air conditioning issue at all. And I hope it really doesn't, um, you know, become an issue for, for you guys as well. So I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on that in the comments. Um, if you're for it, if you're against it, you know, everybody has their opinions. And if it's not for you, then there's definitely other modes of transportation. The buses will remain. Buses aren't going anywhere. Uh, you know, you can use the monorail. You can, you can do whatever you want. You can ride the boats without the air conditioning. <laughs> but uh, there's, there's all these different modes of transportation. So make the Disney experience your own experience and what's best for you. And I think it'll just be uh, a much happier moment. And I think this is going to be awesome. I cannot wait to ride it. And I hope uh, you guys really feel the same way. Okay, so there you have it. I really hope this video helps to answer some questions. Um, now we know exactly how the power supply works. We know what we can expect, some things that maybe we can hope for. Uh, lighting would be awesome, fans. You never know about cameras. Uh, music, announcements, there's going to be so many cool things happening with the Skyliner. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to watch things uh, unfold day by day. And I hope you guys are enjoying the ride with me. And hopefully we're going to enjoy this exact ride uh, behind me as well, because it's going to be a lot of fun. Really looking forward to it. Uh, definitely check out PassportToTheParks.com. You can find all kinds of great information. Uh, definitely more stuff about the Skyliner, all kinds of cool stuff happening around uh, Walt Disney World. Uh, definitely follow me on social media, please. And if you haven't uh, subscribed here on YouTube, I definitely would appreciate that. It always helps to support everything that I do here around Disney World. So uh, with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day and we will talk to you very, very soon. Bye-bye.